As each UK country is wrestling with restrictions and with political turmoil at the heart of government, do we have the right strategy to get a grip of the infection rate? Also tonight. Good evening. We can't be sure how many people have died of COVID in the UK over the past eight months, but as of today, the official figure of 50,365 is bad enough. More than 50,000 lives lost and more than 50,000 grieving families. But it's not the only figure. There are reckoned to have been many other fatalities resulting from COVID that were not registered as such. The news of a vaccine holds promise, but right now, the UK is still grappling with stubbornly high infection rates, incomplete test, track and trace, with NHS capacity issues, political disagreement over lockdown and persistent criticism of the government messaging on the pandemic. And indeed tonight, Lee Kane, the Director of Communications at Number 10, responsible for much of that messaging, has resigned. Here's our political editor, Nick Watt. Tell me, Nick, what is the turmoil at the heart of Number 10? Well, Kirsty, at the moment there is an almighty power struggle going on in Downing Street. So, as you now, we did ask the government to speak, but it declined to talk to us tonight. Uh, good evening to you all, uh, Jamie Brown. If I can begin with you, we talk about a figure of fifty thousand plus, but of course, every life lost is devastating for a family. And I wonder if you can tell us what happened to your dad. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all very much for joining me. Well, frustrations with the shortcomings of the NHS test trace in England and a lack of trust in it are leading councils to devise their own solutions. And Calderdare Council in West Yorkshire is one of the first. It is running its own local contact tracing in conjunction with the national NHS test and trace system. People there have been living under restrictions for much of the pandemic. And a report today by the Northern Health Science Alliance suggests that the North is suffering the impacts of the virus more harshly than other parts of the country. So with a second lockdown now offering the chance to bring infection rates down, what do the people of West Yorkshire need to happen next? Our UK editor Katie Razzle has been in Calderdale to find out. Trade could well be paralysed. Is that what we're talking about, that this could actually happen, that trade could just grind to a halt? Well, it's... it's I, I... Thank you very much indeed, Ron McKenzie, for joining us tonight. Well, as you heard earlier from Nick, there is a shake-up taking place tonight in the heart of government with one of Boris Johnson's closest aides, Director of Communications Lee Kane, resigning amidst reports of internal tensions in Downing Street. Join me now, two of the biggest political brains in the business, the Times columnist Danny Finkelstein and the Guardian's Polly Toynbee. Uh, Danny Finkelstein, first of all, what is your uh, reaction to uh, Lee Kane's departure from number 10? It's quite a big event, I think, actually, because... What to the press secretary, Allegra Stratton, let's just stick uh, with uh, another big beast, as it were, Dominic Cummings, uh, Danny Finkelstein, who we hear tonight is considering his position. Truly considering his position or just full considering his position? I think so. I think that... I mean, when Allegra Stratton uh, was appointed uh, the press secretary, that was a very big moment, as we heard there, uh, from Lee Kane. Now, you know, she was nothing to do with the vote leave. In fact, she was a colleague of yours in The Guardian, a colleague of ours on Newsnight. I can cut from a completely different jib to a lot of the people that were ready in Downing Street. I think your advisors, yeah. you could It's a be... big thing because, as we're saying, you know, it might seem like an insider story, but actually has profound implications for the way this government presents itself. I think it certainly does. I mean, people think coming should have... You know. So this idea that they, obviously Lee Kane is no, lo no longer be considered for the Chief of Staff, that was rescinded practically as soon as it was offered. Will there be another Chief of Staff, Polly Toynbee? Because this, as you say, is a critical moment. Coming up to the... Thank you both very much indeed. This Armistice Day is also the centenary of the burial of the unknown warrior at Westminster Abbey, the grave of a fallen soldier who represented those whose place of death is not known or whose remains are unidentified. The poet laureate Simon Armitage composed a poem in commemoration and read it today at a special service in the Abbey. We leave you with the poem read by the actor David Morrissey. Good night. <laughs> 